Today we're going to be working on replacing the shower valve. Obviously the first thing you want to do is you want to expose the copper pipes behind the wall and sometimes you're going to have to just open up a good portion of the wall. This is going to give us access to remove the valve that's been sweated on. So we're going to basically right now uh, turn the water off to uh, the main supply. Remove your spout. You may have a different type of spout. This one has a screw on the side. Basically, you're going to loosen the screw. You may have an Allen key on the bottom. Uh, basically, once you loosen that, go ahead and remove that. Now, if you have um, one that comes out the wall and you don't see any screws around, the end might be threaded, so you may have to twist the, the spout off. When you do purchase your shower valve, this one has shuttle valves, so I purchased the one that has shuttle valves. You can buy ones that have uh, uh, the assembly without the valves. It really depends on your particular need. This is what's called a brazing heat shield, and this will uh, allow you to um, just basically put it in the back so that your flame, when it does hit, it'll hit the actual uh, heat cloth itself. Again, it's up to you um, how you want to make the repairs. These are just precautions that I take when we're uh, generally doing any type of repairs uh, using our torch. Now we're going to take our new valve and basically we're going to remove the valves that go inside. You see here they're uh, little rubber gaskets. You don't want to heat this up and melt them. So basically you're just pulling out the gaskets. Once you pull these out, just put them to the side. Make sure you put your clips to the side as well. And now we're going to pull out the cartridge. Remove the cartridge and this will allow us when we're soldering back on uh, there's no components that we have to worry about as far as melting. Now when you install this back on, obviously the top says up and you want to put this on the up position. Now we're basically just going to clean our joints on the pipes that we remove so that when we do resolder it, it's nice and clean and we have no debris. If you don't have this, you can get sandpaper and use the sandpaper. You just pretty much want a nice clean surface. Basically what we're going to do now is we're going to clean all of these joints and you can see here. I just pretty much want to dry fit it. And you can see right here once my connection goes inside this side is going to be too short so we're going to have to cut this so it moves in more and this is going to be way too high so we're going to have to cut that and uh, just enough so that this will fit inside. So you may have to make alterations regardless of whatever shower valve you buy. So go ahead and do those uh, alterations to make sure it fits correctly. Now we're just using our pipe putters, we're making our cuts. And now we're gonna go ahead and dry fit it again. Now we got all of our dry fitting done. Once you clean your joints, you just want to make sure that you clean it with a rag, with a cloth. You don't want any contaminants or any debris on the pipe. You can see here, just all that dirt, you want to remove it so that when you put the flux and you solder it, it's on a nice clean surface. We're going to put our flux right now onto the pipe and on all the joints. We 
put all of our flux, we've cleaned the pipe, and now we're going to go ahead and start torching it. Let it cool off before reassembling. Make sure you inspect all of your connections. Generally just take a mirror and a flashlight. You can see this is the gasket inside. It has a hole on each side. Obviously if you put it this way, the water is going to come through. When you turn it off, you want it to be on the sides where it's covering the holes, especially when we start uh, getting ready to do our leak test. So make sure when you're installing these valves that it's in the off position, the water comes in. The water comes in, you want to make sure that you put it in like this so that it blocks the water. And do this on both sides. You take your clip, put your clip back down, and that will actually secure your valve. Both sides. Turn your main water line back on. Once you finish doing your leak test, go ahead and put your cartridge in. Once you put your cartridge in, go ahead and put your pin. Just make sure it's nice and flush.